let's learn something about portland cement composition and iteration reaction in this session i will be covering on oxide composition mineral composition and its iteration reactions First, let's see the oxide composition of Portland cement clinker. The Portland cement clinker is composed of various oxides. Based on the chemical analysis, these oxides can be categorized into two types. One is major oxide and minor oxide. The major oxides are majorly calcium oxide, silicon oxide, aluminum oxide and iron oxide. The minor oxides are basically the alkalis bearing compounds like sodium oxide, potassium oxide, magnesium oxide and sulfur oxide. All these oxides are essentially comes from the raw material used for manufacturing of cement and then the fuel used for the manufacturing of clinker. Next, let's see about the mineralogical composition of Portland cement clinker. The four major oxide, which is the calcium oxide, the silicon oxide, aluminum oxide, and the iron oxide in the raw material interact with each other at high temperature at approximately 1450 degrees Celsius in the kiln and forms four major components that is tricalcium silicate, dicalcium silicate, tricalcium aluminate, and tetracalcium aluminophorates. Next, let us understand the characteristics of these four components of Portland cement clinker. The pillow table shows its proportion range and its characteristics. The C3S in a typical Portland cement clinker varies from 35 to 65 percentage. The C2S which is in beta form varies from 10 to 40 percentage. The C3A varies from 0 to 15 percentage and this C4AF varies from 5 to 15 percentage. A typical Portland cement that is a modern Portland cement clinker will be having a proportion of C3S at 50 percentage. C2S will be a around 25 percentage c3a will be 8 percentage and c4a will be 8 percentage this is a typical portland cement clinker what is available now and if you see the rate of reaction the fastest reaction in this among these four is c3a and the next is c3s these two components reacts very fast in the presence of water and gives very high LH10 whereas if you see their C2S which reacts very slowly in process of water and gives you very high ultimate strength. If you see the heat of hydration evolved from this reaction, the highest heat of evolution is comes from C3A. Based on these characteristics of these four components, we can decide what is that we want in cement. Suppose in case if you want to have very high early strength which is used for precast application, we can have a high amount of C3S in the clinker to get these properties. Suppose you want to have a very high ultimate strength, we can have have a higher proportion of C2S in the cement composition. Depends on the application of the final products what we want. We can change the proportion of the raw material to get the required characteristics in the Portland cement clinker. Next, let's see the hydration reaction of these four components. First, let's see the hydration reaction of calcium silicate that is tricalcium silicate and tricalcium silicate. When water is added to cement, the C3S reacts with water and gives you CSH gel and calcium hydroxide. Similarly, when C2S comes in contact with water, it forms a compound calcium silicate hydrate and calcium hydroxide. If you look at these two reactions, the hydration reaction components formed is similar, whereas the proportion of component is different. In C3S, the proportion of CSH gel formation is less as compared to C2S reaction, whereas the calcium hydroxide liberation percentage is more, that is 39 percentage as against 18 percentage in C2S reaction. In this reaction, the CSH gel formation is the hydration components which is responsible for strength in mortar or in concrete, whereas the calcium hydroxide which is liberated does not contribute in strength to the concrete but whereas it creates a durability problems this calcium hydroxide which is present in the concrete hardened concrete or mortar will react with the water over the period of time and it leaches out or it reacts with either some harmful component from outside and it creates a durability problem like like expansion cracks spalling of concrete or even the corrosion of reinforcement Next, let's see the hydration reaction of aluminate component that is the C3A and the calcium sulfate reacts with water and forms a component called ettringate or monosulfate. Similarly, the C4AF and gypsum that is calcium sulfate reacts in the presence of water and forms a component called ettringate and monosulfate. The difference between this C3A and CF4 reaction is CF4AF reaction has some amount of iron bearing aluminate component 
but otherwise it forms similar hydration component if you look at this hydration components if this ettering gate component forms in the fresh stage then there is no problem in the concrete suppose if this ettering gate formation happens after the concrete is hardened it leads to crack or if this ettering gates convert to monosulfate and this monosulfate reacts with the external sulfate after some time and it again forms to ettering gate and creates a durability problems thank you all let's meet in another session